gone. Could also double check at the coffin maker for the name of this zombie. Or the name of the person we're supposed to talk to on behalf of the zombie. Updated yes, I'll help you. Alright, I guess we just didn't accept the quest before. Let's, uh... I guess we'll go and do it now? It's so All right. weird. Alright. That is a little bit weird. All right. Oh, what's this? Sanctum key? I'm not sure why that's on the ground. Done. We'll take it, I guess. Sebastian. Actually, I want to talk to you about Dimtree. He wants to be released from his curse. He gives you a surprised look and then waves you off. I find that hard to believe, Cutter. Dimtree doesn't have the mental power to desire anything. Did that idiot Hammers put you up to this? Alright, think about it, uh, Sebastian. Hammers doesn't know Dimtree is a zombie, let alone who created him, right? He sighs and seems to be deep in thought. Yes, you're right. Of course. Hammers could not have sent you. I guess poor Dimtree is more aware than I intended. A pox on me for my stupidity. So you will release him? He looks at you for a moment with conflicting emotions crossing his face. He sighs and throws up his arms in exasperation. I cannot. Sorry. I, I want to, mind you, but I can't. I fulfilled my contract by creating Dimtree and I cannot break it. Right or wrong, I am a man of my word. My reputation demands it. Who contracted you? Well, I don't really care one way or another. Um, I think that is kind of our attitude at the moment for this particular case. The zombie... Well, we're kind of undead too. Alright, yeah, no, no, it's wrong. Our character would think this is wrong. I really don't give a rat's arse about contracts. What you did is wrong and he needs to be freed. That would be difficult. He turns and begins to look through a nearby box. After a moment, he removes a book which he sets down in front of you. First, you'd have to have some magical aptitude. Okay, we have that. Second, you'd have to be able to properly speak the words you find on the page 23 of this book. Last, you'd have to touch Dimtree just as you feel the power of the words culminate within you. He turns his back on you and rummages through another box. I couldn't allow you to read that book, however. It'd be tantamount to breaking my word through the actions of another. He continues poking through the box, ignoring you. Alright. So he's clearly... Um... <laughs> he's clearly letting us uh, look through the book. But giving himself plausible deniability. So we'll just take a look at it and then walk away. And pretend we didn't actually take a look at it. Let's go and free Dimtree. It's down here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll release you. He turns the face and gestures toward you. We'll speak the words. You carefully speak the words Sebastian taught you. You then reach out and touch Dimtree lightly on the forehead. With a sigh, the zombie collapses at your feet. You think you hear a fleeting, thank you, friend, as he falls to the ground. Okay. Um, do you say anything different now? <laughs> Are you in the market for coffin yet? He smiles amiably. Well, I hope not, but uh, I think your friend here might be now. Well, just take that bronze ring and carry on. So we're starting to get somewhere with all these quests. I'm gone. All right. So it just seems to me like there should be an entrance or a chest or something where I can I can look through and uh, find you know find that contract in. Anyway, let's um, let's check inside here. Maybe if we talk to another merchant in here or uh, a guard. You see, tall man in plate armor. The armor is of unusual construction. 
Uh, I'm a guard Corvus. I'm guard Corvus. How may I help you, citizen? He gives you a friendly look, but glances over your shoulder. I have some questions. He nods at you. I will help you if I can, citizen. He looks about the market expectantly. Do you know someone named Byron Pikett? Yes, I'm familiar with Byron. What can you tell me about him? He gives you a stern look. Anything I know about that individual's harmonium business, citizen. I cannot discuss such matters with strangers. Perhaps after I get to know you better... Okay. What are you looking at? A young lady wandering about the market. Corva seems to have his eyes locked on her. Alright, you seem preoccupied. What are you looking at? He snaps attention back to you. I beg your pardon, citizen. Please excuse me. His eyes wander back to the young woman and his voice fades almost to a whisper. She has the voice of an angel and she is such a pretty young thing, he sighs. Alright, well why don't you go talk to her? I think we're getting into the realm of a little bit of manipulation here. Um, our character. I don't think he would normally be interested in, you know, these kinds of uh, budding romances. But in the interests of getting his, uh, his task done, I think he's going to try to get him know him better and give him advice. Why don't you go talk to her? Updated my journal. An uncomfortable silence fills the air. Finally, he turns his attention back to you. I, I just couldn't. I mean, a woman like that, well, she must be. He sighs and pauses for a moment. Was there anything else I can help you with, citizen? Hmm. A young woman in the open air market. Yeah, let's go talk to her. Is it female shopper or female shopper or... Who is it you're supposed to talk to? Let's talk to female shopper. An older woman dressed in simple clothes. That doesn't sound like the one. Karina, maybe? You see a pretty young woman wearing simple clothes. She wanders about the market and examines everything, but does not make any purchases. You notice that people seem to be avoiding her, but they try not to make it obvious. Interesting. So we must have some kind of perception to notice that. She flashes you a warm smile as you approach. I'm Karina. It is a pleasure to meet you, Cutter. She continues to smile and waits for your response. Uh... Okay, maybe you're not the one. Who is it then? Alright. What was the description? Try to see what he's looking at. Young lady watering a bit in the market. Um. Hmm. Well, maybe it is Karina. Mm. No. You? An unremarkable person. That's kind of a... eh. Alright, Karina. I have some questions. Where can I buy weapons? I, I guess we'll just start a discussion and see where that goes. Uh, Anne's over there sells weapons, all kinds of weapons. Are you a warrior? How silly of me? Of course you are. I mean, how could you not be with all those scars? Uh, no, I'm not sensitive about those. She looks relieved. Oh good, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Or anyone else's for that matter. You just have to be careful what you say to someone, you know? I mean, people are different and you never know. What may offend one person may not offend another. So anyway... What about magic? Al uh, Alec over there sells magical things. I don't know what a major really looks like now that I think about it. Do you? Uh, no, I don't really know. She gets excited and points a finger at you. See? That's just what I mean. They have all this awesome power and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you uh, really like to talk, don't you? She suffles her feet and looks embarrassed. I, uh... Well, I've been told that I probably talk a bit too much, and, well, people tend to avoid me, and I don't really have any friends or male friends courting me. Sometimes I get lonely. Her voice gets lower and lower until she's finally silent. 
She stares at the ground at her feet. Um. <laughs> okay. I don't think you're a bad person, Karina. I happen to like you. Well, I can understand what. Well. Hmm. I think you're a nice person. I think that's what we would say. Well, I can understand why. Seems to suggest that we're going to be... You understand why people avoid her. We'll try to be friendly, I think. Updated my journal. <laughs> she gives you a hopeful look. Really? Thank you so much. I don't know your name. I'm uh, Adon. Thank you, Adon. It's nice to know I finally have a friend. I'm okay. Going. So that might be the person. Let's go talk to Corvus. As you glance over your shoulder, you see Karina wandering around nearby. Corvus seems to have his eyes locked on her as she wanders about. I say her name is Karina. He snaps his attention back at you. I beg your pardon. You know her, citizen? He looks at Karina again. Voice of an angel and such a pretty young thing. All right. Yes, and she's also lonely. I'm certain she would welcome the company of a gentleman. My journal. He glances at you, then at Karina. Excuse me for a moment, citizen. He steps at you, around you and heads toward Karina. He returns to you and is smiling brightly. Thank you, friend. A wonderful young lady. He looks a little glassy-eyed. Aha! Well, our character doesn't care, but yeah, that's nice. Um, I think that's nice. My pleasure. Now... I have some questions. What do you know about Byron Kit? Or Pika? Dated my journal. Officially nothing. He pauses for a moment before answering. Unofficially, he is suspected of being behind most of the criminal activity here at the market. We believe him to be responsible for the murder of a merchant named Zack. His list of suspected crimes is quite long. Updated my journal. Uh, I would not turn my back to him, and I would think that twice about being anywhere alone with him. That is all, friend. Thank you. Uh, okay. So it doesn't actually give us much to go on. Now let's see if we've got any new dialogue options with him. Hmm. Okay. What about Harmonium Officer? Okay, he seems uninterested in talking to us. What about Guilt Spur here? You see a florid, boisterous man. He's shouting and carrying on like there's a war that's about to come through. He's got something lodged in his intestines. Like, well, like he's too excited about something to talk in a normal tone of voice. Ooh, an auction! Maybe we can sell Anna here. I'd get you if you had something to gut skull. Uh, leave it off, you two. I need to ask some questions here. Hmm. Need rooms? I got rooms. You need supplies? I got supplies. I'd like to sell something to you. Just see what he's got. Alright, let's barter. Let's buy a few of these. Uh, otherwise, it looks like it's all pretty standard stuff. All right. All right. And he does have rooms, so if we need to rest in this area, we can do that. Which is also good to know. All right. So, maybe someone else here. Just a second, I need to turn off my screen dimmer. Maybe someone else here knows... Um, knows about this fellow. Middle-aged man wearing dusty clothes. Nope. Vorten. See a harmonium officer. He gives you a bored look as you approach. I have some questions. Okay, he's on duty, and I don't have time for questions. He pauses. If you would like information, go talk to Ebb Creek Knees. Where can I find him? 
Smoldering Cope's bar, you can find it somewhere down in the hive. Alright. Done. Well, oh! Huh. These barrels can be opened. I'm gone. Interesting. So maybe there's a barrel around here that will have right. the contract we're looking for? Done. All right. You never know. Hmm. Done. Maybe we can talk to Lenny a bit more now. Probably not, but... Nah. Alright, well what... What are we supposed to do? He would never turn his back on Pyron Pikett or be anywhere alone with him. Alright, let's uh... I'm, gone. I'm gonna try reporting this information back... back to uh... what's her name? Uh, Trist, but... I'm gone. If nothing happens as a result of that, then I think we're just going to... Carry on. I'm gone. All right. Uh, I want to talk to you about Trist. She says she doesn't. What if I can prove she's innocent? Hmm. All right, Trist. I need to ask you some questions. Hmm. No. Okay. How much does she cost, anyway? If you meet the requirements as governed by the courts of Sigil and can afford the contract, what are the requirements? First, you must be a citizen of Sigil. Second, you must show proof of permanent residence here and that you can provide accommodations and support for the servant. Lastly, you must not have a criminal record for yourself. And how much is it? 500 copper. And if I want to purchase it outright? Hmm. Never mind. Alright, so there's not nothing much to really be done here. Let's talk to this person. This man has a rough, leathery skin with pale yellow cast and gaunt features. His face is angular and his nose is small and highly placed. His ears taper to points, a tracery of tattoos, and scars cover his body. He's dressed in strange, gouty clothes that look more ornamental than combat ready. His eyes are like two small black stones that and they track you as you approach. Um Hmm. Dakin pauses. I would caution you against speaking to this Gith Yankee. It's a Gith Yankee. Journal. What's common stock? Uh, once of common stock, we were slaves and food for the Ilihids, mind flayers who devoured our lives in order to secure their own. When our ancestors, the warrior queen Gith, led us to victory against the Ilithids, and we escaped. Hmm. Our leader Zerthamon made a pronouncement of two skies, and steel was bared. One race became two. Well, we're... Going to sp we'll let it go. I don't think we need to speak to him. I think we're more interested in taking a look around the warehouse. 